Welcome to the broadcast. This is Revivalist Michelle Morrison. This week I have part two for you of March, the month of overflow in a famine. Folks, we are in the month of March and you need to Put your seatbelt on, get ready because God is going to put you in overdrive. The blessings of God is going to overtake you. Abundance, overflow is your portion this month. Get ready, get ready. Folks, it's not a coincidence that in this month we are flowing from winter into spring. We are transitioning because God is about to transition you into a new season. There's a shift in the season. And this is a crowning point. This is a, a, a point of climax where things are coming together, are heading together. God is transitioning you from an old season and into a new season. Someone needs to get excited with me today because I feel this word deep within my belly. Praise God. I have a word for you today that's going to transform your life. God is realigning you, repositioning you in this month. Praise God. There are going to be people who he's going to take out of your life and new alignments are going to break forth in this month. My goodness, my goodness, you need to get ready, get get ready. Jesus is amazing. Folks, I tell people every week that Isaiah 60 verse 2 tells us that even as darkness covers the earth, the glory of the Lord is going to arise upon his people because we serve a God, folks, who's a God who will bless you right in the midst of a famine, who will, hallelujah, make rivers spring forth in your dry and desert places because he loves to do that. He loves to break the odds. He loves to defy the odds. Praise God. That's the type of God we serve. We're in such a dark time, a time of crisis, over 500 thousand have died in the U.S. alone from COVID, but Jesus is a healer. Praise God. The unemployment rate is sky high, but God is going to move some people from that job and into their own businesses. My goodness, folks, we need to come back to Jesus. He's the only one that can make America great again, and we have been looking in uh, the Old Testament. We looked at the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt and how Pharaoh, the spirit of Pharaoh, that spirit of sabotage and intimidation tried to, hallelujah, oppress God's people. And the Lord used Moses, a deliverer, to give Pharaoh that warning to let his people go. And it's your time, folks, to come out of Egypt, come out of bondage and into the promised land, even in a time of famine. I wish someone would feel this anointing that's with me today. I need Need you to come up out of the natural and into the supernatural because for some God's going to deposit thousands of dollars into your account this month for others hundreds of thousands of dollars someone else is going to be a millionaire by the end of this year my goodness but this month of March this month of March get ready get ready for overflow in the midst of a famine overflow my goodness but I don't want to get ahead of myself folks we looked at Pharaoh last week coming after the children of Israel. And I had part one to this message, March, the month of overflow in the midst of a famine. And this is part two this week. And we looked at the fact that God is in control, even though Pharaoh wanted to be in control and the spirit of Pharaoh has been trying to intimidate you. That boss has been trying to strike fear in your heart. But I'm telling you, if he's not careful, God's going to give you his job. My goodness, that spirit of Pharaoh has to bow to the name of Jesus. That spirit of intimidation tried to oppress the children of Israel and God showed forth that he was God and delivered them with a mighty hand out of the hands of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. My goodness, my goodness, folks, God is in control. God is in control. Someone is looking to man. Someone is afraid of man. Someone's been overlooked. Someone's been left behind. Even in ministry, you've been overlooked. But I'm telling you today that promotion comes 
not from the east, west, but from God. You need to chart out time each day, spend quality time with Jesus in praise, in worship. Take your complaints to the Lord. Don't complain to other people. Take, hallelujah, your prayers to the Lord because he cares for you. And folks, God is moving by your faith. You've got to shake off fear. See, when we understand the nature of God, we look at these biblical stories so we can get insight into the character and nature of God. God will test your faith. God will challenge your faith because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we have to learn how to trust him even when Pharaoh is behind us with his army. We have to know that Pharaoh and the Egyptians are going to be thrown into the sea because that's the kind of God we serve Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, everlasting father, the great I am. Who can you fear when you have a God like that at your side? My goodness, I feel this word today. The month of March is going to be a month, folks, where you will see overflow the overflow of God in every area of your life is going to overtake you. Sickness has to leave you. Poverty has to leave you. My goodness, my goodness. And then we looked at Joseph last week. Joseph the dreamer. Joseph was a dreamer. His problem was not only was he a dreamer, he would tell his dreams. <laughs> Praise God. And we see that Joseph's brothers hated him. Joseph's brothers hated him for many reasons. He had a coat of many colors, which represents the anointing of God, the multi-talented, multi fascinated anointing of God, which is on your life. And folks, people are going to hate you because they could see you coming. Joseph's brothers saw him coming. They saw the purpose and gift and calling of God on his life. And they hated him and tried to kill him for the anointing of God on his life. My goodness, sometimes folks, people will not like you for no other reason except that you are called, that you are chosen, that you are favored, that your daddy, Jesus Christ, has promoted you, has gifted you, has anointed you. So you can't look to men. You have to look to God and learn to love your enemy. Bless them who hate you. Pray for them, my God, because none of this is our kingdom. None of it is ours. We can't die and take it with us. We're here for one reason, and that's to impact this universe for the kingdom of God in whatever area he's called us. So as the body of Christ, it's time for us to get it together. It's time for us to drop the competition that hating the jealousy and folks it's one thing when a stranger when an enemy hates on you when an enemy comes against you when an enemy lies on you when an enemy tries to kill you but it's another thing when it's your own household when your mother lies on you your brothers and sisters try to set you up and sabotage you <laughs> when people in church there's nothing like church hurt when the church comes against you because we are one so if my brother comes against me in the church that means he's coming against against himself because we are one in the body of Christ. It's time, folks, for us to get it together. But I'm here to tell you, as we saw with Pharaoh and the Egyptians who came after the children of Israel, God is in control. God is in control. Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit and the pit took him all the way to the palace. So all things work together for the good for those who love Jesus. No one can stop the hand of God on your life. I wish you would believe me today that no devil in hell is going to be able to abort your purpose and destiny. And God, the only person that can abort that is you through disobedience, through hallelujah, through fear, fear of man, fear of the economy, fear of the times we're in. Someone has to believe God. If God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. I'm not concerned about what corona is doing because corona cannot come nigh my dwelling you have to pull out your word pull out your sword because there's life read psalm 91 over your household daily the problem is we're not utilizing the weapons that god has given us we don't know who we are and god said i've given you power and authority over all the power and authority of the enemy so i'm gonna read now from genesis 41 if you have your Bibles, please turn to it. I'll give you a few seconds. Genesis 41, I'm going to start from verse 14. 
Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I've heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat fleshed, and well favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill favored, and lean fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had he eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind, springing up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. And so we see here that Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. Joseph had been on a path where we know his brothers sold them into slavery to the Egyptians. He ended up in the beginning having favor with Potiphar and was exalted in Potiphar's house. Then Potiphar's wife tried to sexually make advancements onto Joseph. And when Joseph rejected her, she lied on him and it ended up putting him in prison. Potiphar put him in prison and in prison he met a butler and a baker, and he interpreted their dreams. The butler forgot about him, but the baker ended up remembering him when they both got out of prison. And it came a time up to this point where Pharaoh was having this dream <laughs> about the fat and skinny cows. And Joseph was able to interpret this dream and to let Pharaoh know that during the time of plenty to save up for the time when there would be a famine and that a famine was coming. And we know Pharaoh was so amazed the magicians couldn't do it. <laughs> Praise God. Folks, I want you to look at Joseph in this lesson. First and foremost, he gave honor to God for the gift of dream interpretation. Nothing we do in ministry is on our own accord. The anointing of God on my life is the Holy Spirit in my life. So always give honor and credit to God. Another thing here, we see that the magicians couldn't interpret the dream. My goodness, some of you are worried about the witch and the warlock and the magicians and the soothsayers, but I'm here to tell you that they must bow to the name of Jesus. There's no witch or warlock who has the anointing that God has placed on your life, who can stop the purpose of God on your life. Their weapons will form, but it will not prosper. You have to understand it's time to come out of all that worrying about what the witch or warlock can do to you because when God gets ready to bless you, no witch or warlock can stop what God's about to do. Understand God is in control, folks. God is in control and he showed it here as he gave Joseph this interpretation. And as he gave him this interpretation, Pharaoh was so impressed that he exalted Joseph over the nation. Look at verse 40. In Genesis 41, here is Pharaoh to Joseph. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they 
cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Folks, we know the rest of the story. We see this dreamer, Joseph, was placed in a pit, and the pit took him all the way to the palace. I tell people all the time, don't worry about your pit experiences. Don't worry about your haters, because haters are elevators. Had it not been for those who hated on Joseph, he could not have made it to the palace. Sometimes we're trying to pray away our problems, pray away our issues, pray away the haters, but they are the thing that's going to result on the anointing of God on your life. They hated Jesus the same way. And if he suffered, you have to suffer in this world. But if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. And the apostle Paul said he had a thorn in his side and he prayed three times for God to remove it. But the Lord said, no, my grace, I'm trying to teach you. My grace is sufficient, folks. You've got to learn how to rest on God when you're a base. Rest on God when you're abound. My goodness, he teaches us stuff through suffering. The three Hebrew lads were in that fiery fire furnace. My goodness, they were placed in the fire and it was turned up three times. But the Bible tells me that when they looked, there was a figure like the son of man. Hallelujah. God was with them in the fire. God is with you in every fire. No matter how high it gets turned up, you need to understand he's going to bring you out and you're not going to smell like the smoke that you just came out of. Bless your enemies. Pray for them who despitefully use you. Bless them because then God can reign in your life. You will rule and reign with him in this earth. My goodness, I feel the anointing of God on my life right now in this broadcast. You need to get ready, folks. Some of you have suffered for so long. Some of you have been set up. Some of you have been sabotaged. Some of you, the enemy can't figure out. The Bible says that the more the Egyptians afflicted the children of Israel, the more they grew. The more the enemy... The more the spirit of Pharaoh tries to afflict you is the more God is going to enlarge your territory. If you suffer with him, folks, they spat on Jesus. They mocked him. They crucified him, but it exalted him to his place in heaven. So you have to understand the character and principle of God. See, we live in a microwave society where folks just want to be in ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Microwaved up in ministry. No one wants to pay a price, but I'm here to tell you the anointing of God is going to cost you. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some stuff. It's going to cost you some sleepless nights. It's going to cost you some tears. It's going to cost you some of you. <laughs> Even as with Job, God took away everything he had, hallelujah, so that he could show forth, hallelujah, that Job would trust him even in the midst of having nothing. Some of you have to understand that the anointing of God, you've gotten a prophetic word that you're called to teach, that you're called to evangelize, that you're called to prophesy, but it's going to cost you. See, you see the glory, but you you don't see the story. My goodness, I tell people all the time in 2005, I had lost everything. My business went down, my properties, I lost everything I had. I was in my big house, my big mansion with no heat, no light, no gas. <laughs> I was sleeping under my fur coat in the cold, but I remember faith rose up in me. Faith, I started blessing God. I started believing God. I said, devil, you are a liar. I am going to come out of this. But one thing I tell people, People, folks, it's to sow your seeds. God says, sow your tithes and you're offering your tithes as 10% of any increase he gives you in your life. So folks, you cannot want to be a millionaire with a poverty mentality. If you hold on, God's going to hold on. So I challenge people every week. God doesn't need your money, folks. God doesn't need your money. He's trying to find a way to bless you. And in this ministry, I don't take a salary. God has blessed me independently every set that you give into our ministry goes to our outreach locally and internationally. We help orphans, widows over in India, Africa, hundreds of pastors. Folks, this is good ground. And if you want to sow into this ministry so you can be blessed, you can go to wkdmi.org, wkdmi.org and hit donate every set 
goes to support this ministry and this work. And if you want to sow your tithes and your offerings into this ministry, so if you have a local church, so where you're fed and then bless other ministries as well. But if you don't have a church home and if you want to sow into this ministry, you can go to wkdmi.org and click donate and sow your tithes and offerings. My goodness, my goodness. So we're looking at Joseph here. God allowed Joseph to infiltrate the system. God allowed Joseph to infiltrate the system with a solution that would help people within the famine. Hallelujah. Even his very family, his dream came to pass because he was ruler over them. And when they finally met up with him, he forgave them. Amen. He forgave them and told them that he knew God allowed this, allowed them to act the way they are. So folks will always remember that when it comes to your family and those who God used to bring you to that, to that position that he called you to, to forgive, to love, to help them. Praise God, bless them. You're the same one God's going to use in a famine to bless your family. That same family who lied upon you, who that same family who lied on you, sabotage you. My goodness, my goodness. That's the type of God we serve because when you show his love, you show the light of Jesus Christ and it's gonna save those people who turned against you, lied on you, set you up. So God gave Joseph a strategy in the midst of a famine. My goodness, God allowed him to infiltrate and allowed him to have a solution. And folks, some of you, God's going to give you business ideas. He's going to give you ministry ideas that's going to allow you to help people in this time of Corona. You're going to help raise up business owners. You're going to help, hallelujah, hallelujah, to teach classes that are going to change people's lives. Some of you, hallelujah, in ministry, God's going to allow you to save the masses because folks are looking for an answer. They're looking for a solution and eternal life is such a solution. So like Joseph, this famine is going to give us, the body of Christ, an opportunity to show forth <laughs> the glory of God. Even as darkness covers the earth, the glory of the Lord is going to arise upon his people. Joseph had a strategy and God's going to give you a strategy in this time of famine. My God, look at Genesis 47 verse 4. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread for why should we die in thy presence for the money faileth? And Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with bread in all their cattle for that year. My goodness, my goodness. God allowed Joseph to flourish and bless others during the midst of a famine. Overflow in the month of March, folks. Get ready. There's about to be overflow in your life in the month of March during this famine. There's about to be a shift. God is about to shift you from poverty to prosperity. God's about to shift you from lack to healing. You are about to expand in your territory, expand on every side. My goodness, my goodness, you're about to realign. Some of you are going to realign with some new contacts, some people who are going to take you to the next blessing, to the next level. And God cut off the old because God is getting ready to bring some new into your life. My my goodness, the injections you saw before, you'll see no more forever. God is getting ready to blow your mind. Get ready, get ready. Go to our Facebook page, WKDMI. A lot of people have inboxed me <laughs> and one of our counselors will pray with you. I guarantee it. Inbox, reach out, connect. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And remember today, God's about to overflow you folks. Bless you in the midst of famine. Get ready. Get ready for this month of March. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Revivalist Michelle Morrison has seen powerful revival moves of God, both in the U.S. and internationally. 
thousands have been healed, saved, and delivered. Jesus opened the eyes of this blind man in an Indian revival crusade as Apostle Michelle prayed. You're seeing uh, uh, your finger. Shadow. Okay, when your Jesus... Shadow. You're seeing uh, your hand. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 He's in my hand. This man, born dumb, spoke for the first time as Jesus touched him while Apostle prayed. Hallelujah! 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 He can hear you! He can speak! He can hear! He can speak! Hallelujah! This boy, born dumb, spoke for the first time when Jesus used Apostle to pray. What up? What up? What up? He's singing, what up? Louder! What up? What up? This lady was healed from a brain tumor in Lower Manhattan as God used Apostle and Revivalist Michelle Morrison. Let it go by the blood and power of the Almighty Living God, by the blood. That's it. And she's being healed. That's the Holy Spirit all over her. She's not going to need this king. Total healing in every muscle, every tissue, every member, in every part of her body. Loose her. Let her go. Sickness and disease. You can type into the Google search engine, Apostle Michelle Morrison, to see these incredible healing videos, or visit wkdmi.org and click. Dr. Bye. Michelle Morrison has fulfilled the commission to missions noted in Matthew 25, verse 35. In the U.S., she has led several evangelical outreach endeavors in the prisons, hospitals, and shelters of New York City since 2005. Since 2009, Yes You Can Community and Economic Development Corporation, our Christian social enterprise, has helped many low-income communities by hosting economic development seminars, providing resources to low-income people, battered women, and previously incarcerated individuals. In addition, Yes You Can has fed and clothed thousands of low-income individuals in the United States. Since 2014, we extended these efforts internationally by feeding and clothing widows and orphans overseas, assisting with the education for poverty-stricken children overseas, and helped hundreds of churches in their efforts to spread the gospel. Matthew 25, verses 35 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. If you are interested in making a financial contribution toward the vision of Yes You Can or World Kingdom Dominion Ministries, please visit wkdmi.org and click on the donate link on the donate page. You can also send donations to P.O. Box 981, New York, New York 10008 and make checks out to YU.